Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> What's the matter, Doc? Did you lose a couple of patients last night? Matt, I'm thinking of moving to San Francisco. Huh? What for? You got a monopoly here in Dodge. San Francisco's full of doctors. Yeah, and probably all rich, too. No, I'm serious, man. Yeah, forget it, Doc. You're some 20 years too late for the gold rush. In any way, we need you here. Dodge can find another doctor. I'm tired of working day and night getting paid with promises. Hey, you need some money, I'll call a town meeting and shake it out of these people, Doc. But if you try to go to San Francisco, so help me, I'll throw you in jail and you'll practice from there. Good, good. And you'll have to feed me, too. Gladly, Doc, gladly, if you can stand Chester's cooking. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Well, I take it all back, man. Last time I ate one of Chester's meals, I was groggy for three days. <laughs> and, uh, oh, speak of the devil, here he comes. Uh, hey, Chester. Uh, hello, Doc. Yeah, Doc uh, wants to know where you learned to cook, Chester. Why, my Uncle Leander learned me, Doc. I basked with him for a time when I was a boy. Poor old fellow, he died soon after that. I bet he did. Well, that stage is kind of late today, ain't it? Huh? Well, the way Hank's driving, it oughtn't to be, but I haven't got time to loaf around greeting stagecoaches. I'll see you in later. So long, Doc. Bye, Doc. Oh, oh Hank's all turned up, ain't he? Yeah. Wait there, Marshal. I gotta talk to you. I'll get right down. Mm, maybe something's wrong. Maybe. We run into a fight, Marshal. Huh? Anybody hurt? Killed a man I had riding shotgun. He fell off and I had to leave him there. I'll send somebody out for him. Where did it happen? Right where the trail crosses the south fork of the Pawnee. There were three of them bandits, Marshal, but by heaven we put slugs into two of them. You mean you killed two of them? Well, no, they, they rode off, but I could see two of them was all hunked up over their saddles like they was hurting pretty bad. Recognize any of them? I'd hate to be wrong and get a man into trouble, Marshal, but... Well, I'd swear one of them was that young Howard Brandt. What? You know, the fellow that moved out here with his wife a while back. What? Yeah, I met him. They got a place up near Turkey Creek, Mr. Dillon, but I ain't never saw it. Well, let's ride up and see how they're making out, Chester. I'll go get the horses. Here, Mr. Young. He thought it didn't seem like no bandit to me. Real gentle, easy-going fellow. That's like a horse that won't buck when you first got on him, Chester. He's waiting to come loose when you least expect it. Yes, sir. Look yonder. There's Miss Brant now. She must have saw us coming. Yeah. Well, 
Hello, Marshal. Miss Brad, uh, you remember Chester here? Forgot his name. I'm Chester Proudfoot, man. Howard at home, Miss Brent? Anything you want, I can help you, Marshal. Well, I, uh, I'd like to talk to Howard himself. He ain't here. Oh, you mind if we wait for him? I'm real busy, Marshal. Can't you come back later sometime? Well, it's kind of important, ma'am. We'll just wait here on the porch. We won't bother you any. No use, Marshal. Hyde won't be back till tomorrow. Chester. Hmm? Look there on the steps. Oh, that blood. Miss Brand. That chicken blood. I, I just killed one. I'm sorry, Miss Brand, but I'm going to have to talk to Howard. Is he hurt bad? He's dying, Marshal. Leave him alone. I gotta find out who was with him. He won't tell you. And anyway, he's out of his head and not making sense. You want to show me where he is? No. No, Marshal. Leave him die in peace. He ain't got long. We'll kill him asking him questions. I don't figure he'll live through the night as it is. Howard and his friends held up the stage, Miss Brent. They killed a man. Wait, Marshal. I'll tell you. All right. Jed Butler planned it all. Does he live around here, Miss Brent? Howard knew him down in Oklahoma Territory, Marshal. He and a man named Blake come by here one night a few weeks back. They didn't come into the house, so I can't tell you what they looked like. But they talked Howard into holding up the stage, is that it? I didn't know nothing about it, Marshal, till today. I was inside redding up the house, and I heard a shout, and I come out and found Howard laying in the dirt. They just dumped him there and rode off. Which way they ride? I don't know, Marshal. I didn't bother to look. I'm telling the truth. I wish you'd catch him. You think they forced Howard to go along? No. He probably wanted to go. He disappointed me, Marshal. I thought Howard was an honest man. Maybe it's just as well he's dying. I'm going into him now, Marshal. You want me to send Doc out? No. Wouldn't do no good. Well, if there's anything I can do for you, Miss Brandt, let me know. Thanks, Marshal. But I reckon it's too late now. Chester, take this down to Mr. Hightower and have him print up some wanted notices from it, will you? Yes, sir. I guess that's about all I can do about Jed Butler and his friend right now. Oh, somebody will spot him and come tell you sooner or later. And I hope so. It's already been two days. Matt? Oh, hello, Chester. Oh, hello, Miss Kitty. Well, what's the trouble, Kitty? Oh, I, I just went up to Doc's office, Matt. He isn't there. Well, should he be? Was he expecting you? He wasn't there this morning, either. When did you see him last night? I come to think of it, not since the day of the stage holdup. Why? Well, I was with him that night. He came in at the Long Branch real late. We were sitting there talking, and some kid brought him a message. He didn't say who it was from, but Doc left, and as far as I can find out, nobody's seen him since. My God, Miss Dillon, she's right. I ain't saw Doc either. That was two days ago. Well, it's... You know, sometimes Doc's out on a call longer than that. You're trying to fool yourself. Yeah, I guess I am. I heard about two of those bandits being shot. Well, it sure couldn't have been Miss Brandt who come for Doc. No. You mean one of those men was Howard Brandt? They left him at his house, Kitty. I didn't see him, but I believe Miss Brandt. He probably died that night. I feel sorrier for her than him. Yeah, I guess I do too, Kitty. But what about Doc, Matt? What are you going to do? Kitty, if I knew where those men are, I'd have gone after them before now. They're holding him, Matt. They might even kill him. Look, Kitty, I can't go out and ride around on a prairie hoping to bump into them somehow. No. No, I guess it's better to stay here. Somebody might see him or something and come tell you. Yeah, I hope so. If anything happens to Doc, I'll go after those men myself, Matt. Well, maybe they'll 
just turn him loose when he's through doctoring the man. I wish I could believe that. But that's only the beginning of a winter. Yeah, kidding. So do I. <laughs> that day and through the night, but nothing happened. The next morning, however, I was walking down to the office when I saw Miss Brandt drive by in a wagon. I waved, but she went on past me without a sign. And as she did, I noticed a figure lying in the back of the wagon, wrapped in a blanket. As I watched her drive down the street and on out of town, I realized that she must be headed for Blue Hill. I got Chester, and we followed her out to the burying ground. She'd stopped. It was taking the shovel out of the wagon when we walked up to her. I don't need no help, Marshal. Ground's hard, Miss Brent. We'll dig a hole for you. Leave me be. He's my man, and I'll bury him myself. Right where he deserves. Among the rest of these murderers and the outlaws. What are you looking at, Marshal? Your face. What happened to you? Joe's, does it? Mm-hmm. Jet Butler did that, Marshal. He come by yesterday, knocked me around some. He did what for? Where is he? I was going to come tell you once I got Howard buried. But tell me now, he's got Doc with him. At least I think he has. Doc was there, all tied up, sitting on a horse. He didn't say nothing. Butler said he'd shoot him if he did. Why'd he beat you? What'd he want? He wanted to know if you'd been around and if we'd told you anything. Howard was still alive, Marshal. I don't know how he lived so long. But he died after Butler got the shaking him and slapping him. What did you tell him? Nothing. That's why he beat me. Miss Brad, do you have any idea where his hideout could be? I was in the house crying. I didn't see him go. You couldn't track him anyway, Marshal. There's too many horses running around loose out there. Well, at least we know for sure he's got Doc with him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but we're no closer to finding him. You, uh... You sure you won't let us help bury your husband, then? Yeah, I kind of wish you would now, Marshal. I'm just about worn out. I just can't stand this waiting around doing nothing much longer. Can't we organize a posse or something? Uh, Butler would get scared if he got wind of a posse, Chester. You mean he'd shoot Doc and try to get away? He might. It's a safer bet just to wait it out. Uh, uh, Tobiel. Well, come on in. How are you, Tobiel? Tobiel always good, Chester. Well, where have you been the last month, anyway? Out scalping a white man? Tobiel no scalp white man long time. Maybe too long. For a tame Indian, you sure got a wild look in your eye. What are you doing here? Tobiel hunt antelope on prairie. Way off, see two white men. One ride, very funny. Tobiel go very close. They no see, but Tobiel see. Well, what did you see, Tobiel? White medicine man. Doc? Yeah, good man. Take bullet out of Tobiel long time ago. No like him, all tied up in rope. Come quick, tell Marshal. Do you know where they are, Tobiel? Can you track them? White man, easy to track. Like buffalo herd, always big pool. When was this? Yesterday. Long ride from here. Chester, go get our horses and find a fresh one for Tobiel. Maybe we won't be too late. <laughs> It was 
60 miles to where Tobiel had seen Doc and Jed Butler. But we rode hard and covered it in a very few hours. From there on, however, with Tobiel tracking, we had to slow down. There was growing dusk when the trail finally led to the edge of a small bluff and then turned and dropped down around to the side of it. We dismounted and followed it the rest of the way on foot to where we could see a small cabin hidden in a clump of box elder at the base of the cliff. And there we waited for the dark. When it came, we sneaked up to the cabin, stood close to the wall, listening. How is he now, Doc? I've told you before, Butler, the man's dying. And there isn't a thing I can do to stop it. I don't believe you, Doc. Think maybe you're not doing anything on purpose. I'm a doctor, Butler. I do anything in my power to save a life. Even that of a murderer. You go on talking like that, I'll blow you open with his shotgun, Doc. Shotgun, shotgun? Why don't you carry a pistol like ordinary men? I never use nothing but this. And I ain't no ordinary man anyway. Now, I'll say that for you. And no decent, ordinary man would be seen in your company. Doc, you're either a fool or you're plum crazy. Why? Because I'm not afraid to die? Well, you're going to die. Just as soon as he does. I ain't going to leave you around to spread no tales. I'm going to kill you and get out of here. Well, it won't be very long, Butler. Your friend will go most any minute. Maybe I ought to shoot you now. Just leave him here, Chester. Toby. Let's get back. Man, with the man they killed him, Mr. Dillon. Too bad I lost him there before it's too late. No, what? No, he killed Doc. Sure, we do that. Yeah, Toby, that's right, Chester. But we can't just leave him there. Maybe if we make a big noise, Butler can come out. No, no, he's too smart for that. But we got to do something. Doc said himself that wounded man's going to die any minute. I'm thinking, Chester. If plenty time, could wait and shoot when come out in the morning. But he ain't got time. There might be a chink somewhere in that cabin I could poke a gun through. Man say him very spooky now. One little noise, shoot Doc fast. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't dare take the chance. It's terrible being this close and not able to do a blind thing. Yeah. To be a no many trick, all kind. But here, nothing. Because if Butler used a pistol, Doc might have a bare chance, but with that shotgun. Wait a minute. Wait, Wait a minute. What? Shotgun. Yeah, it's not a six shooter. But it's not a repeating rifle. What do you mean? I mean, he can shoot it once, and then he has to reload. Well, once is all it takes. Yeah, to kill one man it is, Chester. What are you doing? Here, take my gun belt. Here, take it. Well, what for? I'm going in there, Chester. Unarmed. What? When I get inside, you and Tobi will sneak up close and be ready to come through that door when you hear his shotgun go off. Mr. Dillon, you can't do that. Yes, I can. You'll kill you, sure. Maybe. But if you two don't get in there fast, if he does shoot, you'll club Doc to death. All right, quiet. Who's that? You get over by the door, Jack. I told him to run a test on the other cigarettes they found. Don't you open it again. About an hour later... Doc Adams is standing by that door, and I got a shotgun aimed at his back. Now, who is it? I'm unarmed. Open the door. Matt? I'll come in with my hands in front of me. Matt, don't do it! Any tricks, and I'll shoot Doc. Go ahead, Doc, open. Hello, Doc. He's unarmed, Butler. And get in here and close that door. Who are you? Matt Dillon. Dill? Marshal? That's right. You got some men outside, huh? Well, it won't do no good, Marshal. I'll shoot you before they can get anywhere near me. I've got two men out there, Butler. The second they hear a shot, they'll be in here. It'll be too late, won't it, Marshal? Well, that depends on how you look at it, Butler. It won't be too late to take you. That shotgun only shoots once. Take me? We, you'll be dead. 
Why? Yeah. Matt, you shouldn't have done this. Why not, Doc? It was bad enough me getting killed. He can only kill one of us, Doc. If he shoots me, so Beale and Chester will get him. If he shoots you, I'll kill him with my bare hands. You, you think you got it all figured, don't you, Marshal? Just about. Well, now, you know I'd rather kill a U.S. Marshal than a doctor. You know that. Matt, uh, Matt, he's right. You, you should have stayed outside. And stand there waiting for him to shoot you, Doc? No, I wouldn't like that very much. Maybe he'll shoot me anyway. Maybe, but at least there's some kind of a chance now. Now, shut up for a minute. I don't quite figure this. No? No. You mean you come in here knowing I'll probably kill you rather than Doc? They're right. Yes, Butler, that's right. That's what he did. Why? Well, no reason, Butler. There's no reason at all. Except for friends, I guess. Something like that. What's being friends got to do with it? You wouldn't understand, Butler. Of course you would. After all, you were nice to He's her when willing to die for, for you, man. Like you. <sighs> I never heard of nothing like that. Him a marshal and everything. He's willing to die. <sighs> That's your friend, Butler. I, I better take a look at him. Well, of course we have it. Blake's dead. Well, make up your mind, Butler. I just don't understand a man like that. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. What's that? You ain't saying that. That comes from something scripture, huh? Is that what it is? You know, Blake's the only friend I ever had. Friend? Yeah. And a while ago, you were willing to leave him here to die alone. Why, you don't know anything about friendship, Butler. No. no I guess I don't. Anyway, if... If I was in a spot like you, there ain't nobody, nobody in the world who'd have walked in here to do for me what the marshal's willing to do for you. Well, then I feel sorry for you, Butler. Real sorry. Yeah, it'll still give you pleasure to shoot. Go ahead. No. No, I'd just get killed anyway. Well, All right, give me your gun, Butler. Sure. I just never know people like you and Doc before, Marshal. You sure you ain't crazy or something? Maybe. Maybe we are a little, Butler. Who knows?